Brian Dauphin in his presentation, Hidden Behind Walls, Changing Attitudes Towards Mental Health, Mental Illness at the Bull Street Campus. Thank you, Dr. Brandt. Okay, throughout the lifetime of the, the Bull Street Campus, there have been different like entrances and walls of varying height that alternately, that alternately impeded and granted access to the grounds. A discussion, of, a, a discussion of these changes will highlight the shifting attitudes towards and comprehension of uh, mental illness. My presentation will travel through the history of the Bull Street campus. It will describe the changes of the name it went by and attempt to explain what officials were communicating to the city out uh, beyond the walls and gates that they were transforming. Part one, the lunatic asylum. Great social changes were sweeping through the nation in the 1820s. Family life was also changing. During the colonial times and up through the first uh, decades of the 19th century, the, the, the uh, care of the physically and mentally sick was the burden of their loved ones. Uh, uh, society as a whole felt a moral duty to care and cure the mentally challenged. Thus, it was the duty to, pro, to provide a moral treatment. A treatment founded on enlightened on a treatment founded on enlightened uh, principles of 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 a benev of a benevolence and of religion. Doctors uh, uh, doctors uh, believed that treating a patient uh, like a child rather than an animal uh, rather than an animal it improved their chances for a for uh, for a recovery. The the and. And the uh, increasing number of foreign-born, non-English-speaking uh, people in need of mental, um, of mental like assistance, burdened the system of caring for the mentally uh, challenged on um, on a family and a com and a com a community level. A new state-sponsored system was needed. On December 20th of 1821, a law was passed calling for the building of an institution for lunatics in or near the city of Columbia. Shortly thereafter, a lot was purchased on the edge of town. But because of delays, it was not finished for over five years later. A article in the 1828 uh, messenger of uh, Pendleton, it characterizes the Lunatic Asylum's association with the community in those, er, um, in those years. Quote, the square is surrounded on three sides and a part of the fourth by, uh, by a single brick wall. The, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the uh, remaining part of the fourth side is fenced by an iron rail on a parapet of brick capped with granite, end quote. By 1853, the asylum was filled to its uh, capacity. The, uh, um, it was filled to uh, capacity and expansion was uh, necessary. Members of the community had a negative view when the asylum uh, purchased the lot and to the east where, uh, 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 where a portion of the Babcock now stands. This attitude is uh, revealed in a poem that is published in the newspapers. For must the asylum be forgot, they have obtained the tailor lot, on which the regents will, they say, build something grand for those who pay. That other nuisance overgrown must still send forth its pauper moan. At this time, the asylum chose to uh, continue to keep its patients to keep his patients out of the public eye and vice versa. Quote, a high brick wall was extended in 1853 to enclose the asylum's nine acres. Starting on Pickens Street, the wall 
the wall went east on Calhoun Street to Barnwell, then north on Barnwell for a block, end quote. Note how in this late drawing, the Pickens Street is still a road uh, separating the, the two properties. In 1895, the institution saw its first name change. To understand why the change occurred, we must look deeper at attitudes and major players. In 1891, Babcock was appointed the superintendent. He set out to reform the institution by expanding its services through establishing infirmary wards and a training school for nurses. He petitioned the legislature to change the name of the asylum to, to the hospital to reflect these changes. The attitudes towards a mental illness also started to change at this time. Moral treatment, um, it effectively ended uh, because it appeared to be uh, connected to poorly run, um, in, poorly run like institutions, overcrowding, and abuse. The practice of custodial care took over where the main thought was on the isolation of patients. Institutions were now viewed as dark places where deranged patients were locked away and not ever cured. Up until 1894, Elmwood Avenue was still a, pub, a public road. A, a, a Colonel Wallace, a Civil War vet, owned and lived on um, owned and lived on a hundred and ten acres that were directly a directly across the road to the north. When the opportunity to acquire his lots came up, the asylum begged the legislature to purchase them uh, because, quote, if this land is not bought now, it will soon be built up, and the possibility of buying land that is contiguous to the asylum will have passed away. A more important fact, the asylum claimed, is the, quote, is the humiliating fact that a public road passes within a few rods of 10 wards that are occupied by white women. Four of these wards, they overlook the road and patients upon them are directly exposed to the view of the idle and curious uh, the passers-by, end quote. And when the purchase of the colonel's land went through in, in 1896, the trend of isolation, it, it continued, and these uh, changes further excluded the public from the grounds and its patients. The entrance at the property was moved from in front of the Mills Building to Bull Street and Elmwood Avenue. A similar brick entrance with a gate was installed at Calhoun Street and Pickens Street, and close off the road. The Pickens Street side of the, o of the original brick wall and entire walls and fence in front of the Mills Building were torn down. A 12-foot ex ex um, extension of more than a block was built on Bull Street to the north of the new entrance. Seen here, uh, seen, and seen here uh, looking west is the new main entrance at Elmwood and Bull Street. It was small and restrictive. After World War I, the modern attitude towards mental illness, it began to take root. In 1920, the hospital for the, in, for, uh, for the insane was officially changed to State Hospital. In the annual uh, report, the hospital explains that the name was changed so that, quote, patients suffering from nervous and mental disorders would come to, to the hospital of their own volition, end quote. In uh, reality, an external investigation uh, noted that conditions were so repulsive that, quote, the buildings were not fit for housing people, end quote. A facelift was needed. No longer should it be called the hospital for the insane, it, it said, but now the more like, friendly, uh, 
a more friendly of Columbia State Hospital. The legislature, it decided on South Car uh, Carolina State Hospital. And treatment and care for patients did not get better at first. It, it was not until the 1950s when Dr. Hall took over that improvement to patient care oh, um, oh, uh, happened. Dr. William S. Hall, a graduate of USC and World War II vet, had a modern um, like attitude towards the treatment of mental uh, illness. He would lead the state hospital from 1952 to 1985 and would transform it from a dark, excluding, and, and forbidden place to one that literally opened its doors to the public. The first week of May is National Mental Health Week. To celebrate this, e th uh, this event in 1953, the hospital started to host the annual Mental Health Week at the hospital. According to the newspaper, quote, this is the first time a program of this type has been offered. The purpose is to uh, present uh, mental health by means of exhibits, films, and addresses. By 1954, the hospital uh, decided that its main entrance needed an upgrade to go along with the new image that it was attempting to portray. Also, uh, because of the single uh, narrow lane, it was seen as a traffic hazard. Dated March 9th of 1954, this is among the last pictures of the gate that had stood since 1896. And for four years from 1954 to 1958, the front entrance looked like this. This is the most extreme example of the new open door policy that, this, that the hospital under Dr. Hall followed. According to Hall, the policy is, quote, a standard and highly thought of uh, instrument used in the treatment of mentally ill persons. It has been found that granting patients as much freedom as their condition warrants brings about, Im brings about Im um, improvements and recovery. In 1958, this gatehouse was finished. Trees, bushes, and flowers were also planted at the entrance to, to appeal to visitors. According to a newsletter that was published by the hospital, the new entrance, quote, it typifies the modern and progressive policy toward the mentally ill and emphasizes the efforts to enlighten and educate the public in the acceptance, the sympathetic uh, understanding, and practical assistance for those who become uh, mentally ill, end quote. The article also, um, it explains that because the new entrance is over 150 feet wide, quote, any ancient thought of seclusion, fear, and mystery are removed, and there is a welcome to come into the grounds and enjoy its beauty. The next barrier that it symbolized the exclusion that was authored, um, altered was the forbidden brick wall. Built in stages in the 1820s, 1850s, and 1890s, it blocked the view in and out of the grounds and, and it impeded access. It served no real, real uh, purpose in years uh, because of the open door policy. According to the newsletter, where there was not a brick wall, there was, quote, only a four-foot light wire fence along half of the campus and no barrier at other borders, end quote. So in July of 1962, Dr. Hall and other, uh, of, and other officials knocked out the first brick at the south wall at the main entrance. Newspapers, they celebrated this event. I quote now from two of them. The lowering of the high brick wall is a progressive step in the modern care and treatment of the mentally ill and will be far reaching in importance and influence. 
The lowering of the wall will permit an unobstructed view of the grounds. Thus, it will in, thus it will in, in, um, enable the public to see the campus. And at the same time, patients will be able to view the surrounding areas of the city and have the feeling of being a part of the outside world." End quote. The wall, though altered, is still served a partial purpose. Being about four feet high, according to the newsletter, it, it will, quote, offer some protection in preventing the, the, the elderly patients from accidentally walking off from the group and wandering into traffic on Bull or, Bull or Calhoun Streets, end quote. The newsletter, it sums up the hospital's new thought at that time. The low, quote, the lowering of the high brick wall, symbolic of say, of, of, symbolic of say, uh, symbolic of, se, of uh, seclusion, is indeed a progressive step. And it is felt that all the citizens will welcome this and other, Im and other improvements in the means of caring for the mentally ill. And in, and in according them every opportunity to live happy and useful lives, either in the hospital or when they return home." End quote. The state of the hospital went through different cha uh, cha cha uh, changes over the course of its nearly 200 year history that mirrored those uh, beyond its borders. The first era was that of moral treatment. The failure of moral treatment gave way to, cu to, cu to custodial care. And custodial care gave way to the progressive open door policy. The state hospital tells a, 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 a remarkable story, constantly adapting to the world that was uh, beyond its walls. Its greatest challenge lies in front, though. A redevelopment will surely alter its landscape. And though its walls are, pro, are, are, pro, are, um, are, are protected and will not be torn down, much of what lies within them is in danger. Only the involvement of the community can lessen the scale of these changes and ultimately save the Bull Street campus. Thank you.